Welcome back to CCTV's News Bulletin with the following headlines. Highlights of the social event, an interview on circular economy and a statement on emerging chemical control legislation in Southeast Asia. But we'll start with some questions and answers from the Q&A on China. My question is, when you cited an experience in one province that they required the uh, uh, exporter to translate the SDS from English to Chinese language, um, and we know that following the Farpel book saying that English is the universal language, uh, may we know what the national agency have done in that regard? The third is, what is the percentage of compliance of your industry when it comes to export of your goods to other countries? Are they also strict in terms of submission of the labels and uh, the SDS? Thank you. Uh, for, for the uh, SDS, uh, the, you, uh, you can classify the, uh, your products based on the uh, uh, purple book classification criteria. Uh, because the China uh, adopt all the building blocks in the uh, uh, book, and uh, uh, you um, you can prepare the uh, the English version, and then uh, um, translate into the Chinese. But you shall uh, check the uh, requirements in the uh, SDS standard and check. If your uh, prepared information is totally meet the requirement in the uh, Chinese SDS standard requirement. Time to check in on our local reporter. Sherry, what are you doing? I'm relaxing. After yesterday's walk on the wall, I could find a good massage. Did you know that different zones of a foot is connected with a different part of the body? The reflex point for the brain is the tip of the big toe, as well as the tips of the second and third toes. According to traditional Chinese medicine, if you manipulate the reflex points on the feet that communicate with the brain, you will stimulate the flow of the vital energy to the brain and promote the healthy full balance of the brain's processes. The second and third toe after your big toe are also connected with the eyes. Your remaining toes are connected to your teeth, your sinuses, and top of your head. Interesting. We could all use a nice massage, I guess. First, some highlights of the interview I had on circular economy with Anna Tevelde. During the launch of the circular economy package in Europe, a statement was made that circular economy creates opportunities for the growth of the European chemical industry. What is your view on this? Yes, I definitely believe that it will be, will be creating opportunities for, for the chemical industry as well. Uh, but it's not a process that is uh, reached overnight. It will take time because new business models are needed. Um, new uh, ideas about how to uh, come to a uh, circular process in the chemical sector instead of a linear, linear process all takes a lot of time. Uh, what kind of circular economy practices do you see here in China? You see the design of uh, very modern industrial parks where industrial symbiosis takes place where uh, one factory uses the waste streams of the other one again in its production process. And because they are designed from scratch, it is also easier maybe to, to do um, compared with Europe. On the one hand, there are very highly sophisticated uh, uh, examples. On the other hand, I mean, you, you see the waste in Beijing. Uh, no. there's, there's a lot to be done. Do you see some good uh, practices uh, in EU member states uh, that can bridge the differences uh, in the approaches for circular economy? Yeah, for example, I see a very specific example is the North Sea Resources Roundabout, which is a platform in which the Netherlands, Belgium, UK, uh, Germany and uh, France are working together to uh, cater for cross-border supply change of waste streams, of recyclable streams. Please watch the complete interview on our YouTube and Tudo channel. Now it's time for the statement of the day. Yesterday we learned a lot on all the developments in China. This morning we will focus on the emerging chemical control legislation in Southeast Asia, among others Vietnam, 
I'm very honored to have in our studio from the Vietnamese Chemical Agency, Mr. Viet Tang Le. Welcome. Yes, thank you a lot for inviting me. There are many things happening in Vietnam and one of them is that you're currently creating a Vietnamese inventory. Can you share something about that process? We are developing the National Chemical Inventory and Database. And to do this, we have done the national survey uh, on the uh, current chemicals used in Vietnam. And we will check uh, with the list uh, regulated under the law on chemicals. And we also uh, can adopt partly the international chemical inventory. So basically you focus on all the chemicals that are currently in Vietnam on the market. Uh, those are in the database, something from the previous uh, Vietnamese legislation, and you borrow something from international databases. I think that's a very smart move. And your statement is? Uh, my statement is that the way that Vietnam do uh, can be useful for the other emergency countries, especially the developing countries. Pietan, thank you very much. Let's return to our local reporter and learn more about yesterday's social event. Sherry, did you have a good time yesterday? Yes, it was very nice. Please watch my impression about the social event. Welcome to the Great Wall or the Long Wall in Chinese. And long it was with a total length of more than 20,000 kilometers, which is equal to half of the equator. A great location for sightseeing and a workout for 2017 Chemcom delegates. The first part of the wall was already built more than 2,600 years ago. It was built among an east to west line across the historical northern borders of China to protect the Chinese states and empires against the raids and invasions from north. Many emperors since then have rebuilt, maintained and enhanced the fortifications with, for example, these kind of watchtowers. The majority of the existing walls mainly dates from the Ming Dynasty. This specific part of the wall is Juyong Guan Pass, a very important strategic place connecting the inner land and the area near the northern border of China. In ancient times, the Juyong Guan Pass was named the most magnificent pass in the world. I would say a great location for magnificent social events. That was yesterday. Let's see what we have in store. Today we have an impressive lineup, starting with authority representatives from Thailand, Malaysia, Vietnam and Philippines. Then down under to Australia and New Zealand, followed by India and Russia. After that, a roundtable on chemical industry towards a sustainable future, with among others digitalization and circular economy. Followed by the latest news on the US Tosca developments, as well as Canada and Brazil. Thank you for watching and enjoy your day.